Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the types of knowledge of performance augmented feedback. Uh, so there are different ways to deliver KP. So we can deliver it verbally, of course. Um, so if we are going to deliver verbal KP feedback, um, then it's important that we prioritize the feedback that we want to give so that we don't overwhelm the learner, especially if they're a beginner, they may not be able to receive a large amount of feedback about their performance and they may not be able to receive it or address it or understand what to do with it. So prioritize the corrections that need to be made or the things that you want to address um, and go one at a time, uh, especially with a beginner. As somebody becomes more advanced, then you can give more feedback at once and they'll be able to integrate that into their performance. Um, so we can give descriptive KP or prescriptive KP. Descriptive meaning that you are simply describing the error a person made um, and not necessarily talking about how to fix it, but just saying, here's what happened in that performance. Like maybe at the end of the execution, you say, you know, you, your hips were flexed too far or you are bent over too much or whatever it, whatever it is. Um, uh, but you're giving some feedback about their performance of the skill without any information about correcting it versus prescriptive KP. That's where you're giving the same information about what the error was, but then you're also giving information about how to correct that error. Um, so descriptive KP is useful for advanced learners. So someone who's pretty advanced in the skill and you're giving a little bit of feedback that they did something incorrectly um, and they have enough experience to know how to correct that problem. So you don't need to give the prescriptive KP. You can just tell them, here's what we saw, and then they will already know how to fix it. Uh, that doesn't work for beginners because they don't have enough experience to know what to do to make the correction. So they require prescriptive KP because they need to know what they did wrong and they need the information about how they can fix it. And then with experience, they'll know in the future how they can fix it. And then the descriptive KP will be sufficient. Um, another way to deliver is manual feedback, also referred to as haptic feedback, kinesthetic feedback, and tactile feedback. Um, so manual feedback, it's the actual physical moving of the person uh, passively into the correct position. So it's like in archery, let's say, you know, the, the learner pulls back and is in their position. And if the coach comes over and moves their arm back or moves them manually into the correct position, that's an example of manual feedback. Um, so it can be effective when there is a specific movement feature that needs to be corrected, and it might be difficult to describe or demonstrate or explain. Um, in some cases, manually putting the person into the correct position is the best way to do it because then they can actually feel in their body what the correct position is supposed to be. Um, now, we need to be careful how we implement it because... Um, we want to encourage them to complete the movement correctly, but not cause the learner to become dependent on you manually putting them in the correct position. Um, so it should only be done every so often, not too often, because they'll become dependent, um, like maybe manually put them in that position. And if it requires correction, again, try a different version of feedback. So try verbal feedback or some other way to correct the error. Um, video recordings can be useful. Um, how effective watching a video recording is depends on the skill level of the learner and whether they have an experienced um, person to watch and correct with them. Um, so for a beginner, it can be helpful to watch the video recordings, but only if there's an instructor of some kind who's pointing out the critical information in the video that they need to see and, and learn from. Um, for an advanced performer, they may be able to detect their errors and learn from the video watching it themselves, but even the most advanced performers will still receive benefit from watching with uh, an experienced instructor who's able to provide verbal cues and, and help them see where to direct their attention. Um, movement kinetics and kinematics. So we can use equipment and software um, to give sort of biomechanical feedback to the performer about their um, performance. So 
Um, they, so it can allow learners to quickly acquire coordination patterns that are considered difficult to learn. Um, so there are all sorts of interfaces and equipment and ways that this can be done, but uh, it would provide some kind of graphical information, information about velocity, displacement, or other biomechanical variables and kinetics or kinematics, depending. Um, and so if the person is observing that information, they're receiving that information while they're performing the task or afterwards, after they've performed the task, that can help them sort of calibrate their movements and their coordination patterns if they're trying to match a certain kinematics or uh, achieve a certain force or whatever it might be uh, during that movement. You see this in uh, rehabilitation settings a lot, like where somebody is trying to get the movement patterns correct for walking or different types of movement patterns where uh, you can compare the what you're actually doing with the ideal or what they're aiming for. And um, then finally, biofeedback is an augmented form of task intrinsic feedback. So task intrinsic feedback, meaning your own sensory experience of the task, so it's an augmented form. It's an additional form of feedback related to your own physiological experience of the action. So it could be like heart rate, blood pressure, muscle activity. There's all sorts of ways that we receive augmented um, biofeedback. Um, electromyographic biofeedback, EMG, is the most common when it comes to motor skill learning. Um, and we debate in the field whether this is a good form of augmented feedback for motor skill learning, uh, partly because EMG doesn't always mean, you know, depending on what the EMG biofeedback is, doesn't always mean that you're doing something correctly or incorrectly. It may not always be the same for every person or even every attempt. Um, and then also, let's say it's totally accurate and meaningful to the to the activity. It also, you could become dependent on that EMG feedback to be able to produce the, the activity or the, the skill correctly. And if it isn't available in the performance situation, then it works against you. All right. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.